it's uh, actually a privilege to share my ideas with your group, especially on forgiveness. And uh, like you already said, like Dr. Anjan already mentioned, many people already have done forgiveness. Many of you are seekers, uh, healers, leaders. You're all on a spiritual path. And you already know about forgiveness. So rather than just talk about what forgiveness is, I hope today to direct your thinking towards how you can gift it to the world, how you can make it your legacy. You know, today people are in a constant search. They miss some inner connection. And forgiveness is the way you can bring that connection back. When, when we begin our lives, when we start off as babies, we are very open. We embrace the world with wide open hearts. But as we grow, we close ourselves. You know, we get trapped in our uh, hurt, fear, anger from the past. And forgiveness liberates us from those chains of hurt, bitterness, resentment. We can't change the past, but we can release that emotional charge and integrate the learnings. And then we'll become peaceful with our memories. And when we do that, this changes the present and our future. So when we forgive, we feel expansive, empowered, peaceful. We become free, basically. I would like to share how I became interested in forgiveness and what it means to me. My uh, life journey itself began with lots of opportunities to forgive. My father left my mother when I was a toddler. Uh, he cheated, betrayed her, betrayed the entire family. And much later in life, I did a lot of forgiveness work with him. I'll come to that later. But before all that, my first conscious use of forgiveness began with self-forgiveness. My mother died when I was 22. I had tons of guilt about how miserable she'd been in the last stages. And that was because of the decisions I had taken for my life. And when she passed away, I could never talk about her or think of her without having a choking sensation in my throat and, and some kind of constriction. And this went on for years. And at some point, I attended a metaphysical program. And there, I released all that guilt about my mother. I really felt like I was coming out of a deep well. It was a life-changing experience and I felt completely light and free after that. And then I could enjoy talking of my mother, thinking about her. I would feel joy. I could cherish all the beautiful memories of our life together. I regained that entire chunk of my life by forgiving myself. It was so beautiful and I had to forgive myself. No one else can do it for us. And then over the next few years, I came across uh, work on forgiveness. I came across Louise Hay, who strongly advocated forgiveness. And then I came across Colin Tipping, who focused entirely on forgiveness. And meanwhile, forgiveness also became a part, natural part of my one-to-one -one work. And over, over a period of time, I developed a workshop on forgiveness. And that kept evolving over the years. And then it became the intervention that I used in my uh, doctoral research. My PhD in psychology is on forgiveness. And uh, when I did that, what I already knew got validated by the research results. Now, I had scientific evidence also that well-being improved significantly after the intervention and that it actually changed people's lives. So how does it actually change lives? One big gain is freedom. My workshop itself is called Forgiveness Path to Freedom because it frees us up in all areas. For me, forgiveness is the biggest lesson that we're all here for. And it's an ongoing journey. It opens our heart, releases us from the toxicity of unforgiveness. And when we don't forgive, we are still bound to the past, which doesn't even exist other than in our own minds. So some examples of uh, you know, the benefits that people have had, uh, if you take health, there was a lady who came with a urinary block and on the third day of the workshop, and we did some release work, she came back uh, in the afternoon after the release work was over. She found that she was able to pass urine freely. There was no block anymore. What she thought was some obstruction created by the doctor during some procedure just completely disappeared. Another, when she released her emotional blocks, this block also went off. There was another lady who had no sense of taste after 13 years after the workshop her sense of taste came back 
after she practiced forgiveness. There was a 50 year old. She canceled all her work and she practiced intensive self forgiveness for a whole week. And the gift she received was freedom from knee pain. That knee pain was there for 30 years. She was now able to climb stairs easily. I myself, I had a frozen shoulder for a few months. And I did everything. I did physio, yoga, this, that, everything possible. I did, uh, I was meditating, I was doing affirmations. And then finally I said, okay, these affirmations that I'm using, I'll make them into songs. And I started with the forgiveness song. And we went to the studio and spent, it, it took us about 12 hours with a singer. Uh, and the lyrics were repeated so many times for it to come right. Uh, so we heard the, lyrics over and over again for 12 hours and it got done I went home it was midnight I went to sleep next morning I woke up and the shoulder was free no longer frozen we just repeatedly listening to the words I got the gift of release I don't even know what I have to forgive it just happened any area relationship brother and sister there was so much hatred after the sister did forgiveness the brother became very caring uh, it's very common with husband and wife situations where one person does the work, the relationship changes. Career, finances, every area. There was a lady actually who loaned a large sum of money to a friend and that friend absconded with it. One decade later, when she came to the forgiveness workshop, she did forgiveness work with her. Within days, the friend contacted her and repaid the money. I know it all sounds like, how can this happen? But it happens and it happens again and again. So it can't even be a coincidence. There are so many benefits from forgiveness. We have more trust, confidence in ourselves. We feel calm, peaceful. Uh, we're free from rumination, depression, anxiety, anger, compulsions. These are all things that unforgiveness breeds. Yet some people don't want to forgive because there are so many misconceptions about what forgiveness is even therapists don't use it because of misconceptions so if they understood the value and benefits of forgiveness they would take it more seriously because each of us has our own meaning for what forgiveness is so let's just get an understanding of what it really is and what it's not very briefly so forgiveness is not to excuse or uh, you know to give excuses condone or justify what happened it's not just a cognitive decision we don't forgive and forget. We hear that often, no? forgive and forget. We don't forgive and forget. It's not an exchange for an apology. I often hear, if they apologize, I'll forgive. That's not forgiveness. And it's not reconciliation. Uh, what genuine forgiveness is, is that we acknowledge the person for having wronged. We know that they've wrong, created, done something wrong. And we don't justify it. We work to release the emotional charge that that wrong has created. About decision, the decision is the first step. But after that, more important is processing our emotions. That's what brings us to that state. The emotions can never be bypassed. And then when we forgive, rather than forgetting, we remember, we remember in a wholesome new way, where the memory no longer hurts. It's, it's like, the whole event is there, everything is there, your timeline is intact. And about reconciliation, reconciliation needs forgiveness. But we can forgive and we don't need to reconcile. Forgiveness is completely independent. If, if we want to reconcile, we can. Otherwise, we can just forgive and be free. And it's not an exchange for an apology because then that will just become a barter. Then that, that's, there's nothing there then to forgive. Right? Forgiveness is to give. Okay, and then what we fear is, uh, maybe it will be unfair to the victim if we forgive. And regarding justice, the victim really gets freedom when they forgive. There's no justice in the victim suffering even more with the toxicity of unforgiveness. Already they've been hurt and the offender is gone. What's the use of the victim suffering more, ruminating over this? The, when they forgive, when they release the emotional charge, they are free. Sometimes we think they don't deserve my forgiveness. 
whether they deserve it or not, it's not about their deservability. It's about whether I deserve to have a good life. So we deserve to forgive so that we are not caught up in their whirlpool of misdeeds. Yeah. Then another fear is people will take advantage of me. The truth is nobody can take advantage of us anymore once we forgive because that pattern itself breaks. And then we can choose how we want to live. So forgiveness actually protects us in the most ecological manner. Once we drop those emotional patterns, we drop the need to be disrespected or taken advantage of. Then sometimes people say we have to spend a lot of energy to forgive. No, we don't. We gain energy when we forgive because it takes a lot of energy to hold on to grudges. We spend energy thinking about the same issue over and over again. Imagine how much energy we'll gain on an ongoing basis when we forgive. So it's effective in all areas of life, health, relationships, prosperity, peace. Whenever we're stuck in something, something is not working in our lives, that means there's something to forgive, even if you don't know what it is. So instead of waiting for someone else to do something or, or in situations where you want the other person to first initiate, not worth it. It's worth investing our time into it for us to have that peace. Yeah, forgiveness works whether it's the smallest or the biggest grievance, whatever it is, bring it in. It's a small everyday grudges that actually eat into our system because they're so consistent and persistent. In spite of all this, if someone does not want to forgive, we want to uh, kind of respect that because we don't want to be insensitive. They probably have a reason not to. Uh, for example, there was a man, he felt that uh, he would be, be betraying his family if he forgave his uh, brother-in-law because the brother-in-law had cheated all of them. Even if he remotely thought of forgiving, a resistant part of him popped up. So in that situation, we have to work differently, where both parts are respected and listened to. The best is to start from wherever each one is. Even being willing to think about the possibility of forgiveness is a good start. Research shows that even thinking about it reduces uh, stress levels and it actually creates healing in the body. And if it's hard to forgive someone in particular, choose something smaller, choose a smaller hurt and begin from there. That practice will allow you to go deeper. And then there are times where uh, we are the wrongdoers and we need to be forgiven. So when we seek forgiveness, we cannot claim it or demand it. The other person has a right to forgive me or not to forgive me. They are justified in how they feel. So instead of depending on them, I can make peace within myself and then apologize genuinely without expecting that the person will forgive me or should forgive me. Since I'm the one who's feeling guilty and ashamed, I need to forgive myself. Once I forgive myself, they might also feel comfortable with me and that awkwardness could recede and they might feel compassionate towards me and accept my forgiveness. Like in my mother's, in my case with my mother, my mother was no longer alive. It would never happen if I were dependent on her to forgive me. She was not there to forgive. I had to forgive myself. Um, our center, we work with uh, offenders in jail. So in one of the sessions, in one exercise, a man began to weep. He had his face hidden in his hands and he was sobbing, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. So I explained that what he had done was his behavior and it was not who he was and that he could choose to behave differently. So then he thought about it and he looked at me like he had a new insight. Then I asked him, to think of one time in his life where he might have been loving or lovable. I said, do you have one time like that? So then he nodded in a moment of uh, realization. Then I asked him, was there only one occasion or did you have several? And then he said, there were several times. So I asked him if he could love himself for those times. His eyes just went moist, not in shame this time but grateful that he could recognize that he too had some goodness within him. He gave a smile like he had just regained his life. It was such a moving moment. Yeah, so when we acknowledge what we have done and then we forgive ourselves, we can move out of that pattern and then we can live our truth. That's what this boy had, that opportunity now. 
And what is our truth? Our truth is love, compassion, well-being. That's what is at our core. So forgiveness is the bridge between our wounded state and our core state of love and compassion. So once we reach that state of forgiveness, we can easily access this love and compassion. And forgiveness does not undo the wrong or reduce it. It is just for us to be free of that negative effect of the past so that we can live a full life. So how are we actually living? If we look at our lives, if you are talking about living a full life, how are we living our life? At the end of our life, we have a lot of material possessions, whatever, isn't it? And while we're living, we make a, a will and a testament so that when we die, our property is distributed to whomever we wanted to go, isn't it? Along with our material willables, we also will something that we don't even realize. We will our attitude, our actions, our thoughts, our behavior to our descendants. So what is the emotional will that you are making? What would you want to leave behind? So just close your eyes and reflect on some questions that I'll ask you. You can close your eyes and do that now. What is the legacy that you are leaving behind? Do future generations receive your goodwill or are they gifted with ill will and hatred? Or is it a combination of both? What they receive is how you are living now and what you feel at the end of your life. Take a few moments to become aware of what it really is. And when you're ready, you can come back. Okay, so our ancestors, they bequeath us with plenty. It's both health and goodwill, which we want to pass on. And there's also ill will, hatred, incompetence, family battles. And we might increase the ill will and pass it on, or we could recycle this energy, make it into rich compost, and hand down healthy, fertile soil for the future. The legacy we leave for our children and their children will be a testament of how we've lived our lives, what we've done with our lives. Whether we give them material possessions or not, we can certainly leave behind a healthy attitude. How we feel on the deathbed will indicate how we have lived our life. Uh, S.N. Goenka, the teacher of Vipassana meditation, uh, shares the Buddha's teachings. He says that there are four ways we can live. We can move from darkness to darkness. We can move from darkness to light or from light to light, or from light to darkness. Yeah, at the end of our lives, where and how we are, is what we'll be passing on. So again, close your eyes and check within honestly. From your life so far, you close your eyes first and check. From your life so far, will you be handing down joy and wisdom or will you be handing down misery and emotional in bank bankruptcy okay i found it or is it a combination of both which is more take a few moments to become aware and then you can come back. So our life is filled with opportunities to grow in awareness and to acquire emotional wealth and wisdom. Every moment we have an opportunity to forgive and heal aspects of ourselves. Every conflict, every irritation, anger, resentment, frustration, it's all recyclable garbage that has the potential to become rich compost. We can use every one of those things. Every time you're irritated, the smallest thing, we can see what do I want to forgive now and then make it into rich compost. So along with emotional, with emotional assets, we would have inherited liabilities also in the form of suffering, beliefs, 
do we want to pass on our, our inheritance as it came because we take beliefs from our family parents siblings mentors uh, those close to us people we respect and we may be reluctant to let go of what we've acquired especially from mother father and all we may feel guilty to let go of those uh, inherited beliefs even if they no longer serve us we know that if we may know they're uh, irrelevant now and yet we may feel guilty to let go of them it will feel like we are betraying those people letting go of them from our lives and so that might stop us from changing those beliefs or letting go of those patterns even beliefs of having to suffer or uh, that we need to be revengeful so we can work on these by accepting the person keeping the closeness the connection and just let go of their beliefs their attitude we can show ourselves that the relationship is still intact even though the belief or attitude has changed we can have a conversation in our mind with the person and explain that this is no longer relevant for me doesn't hold good it doesn't work anymore even though it may have been relevant when it started because do we want to you know just let everything become rotting garbage or do we want to enrich what we have are we ready to have closures otherwise if you don't have closures we leave things lingering ongoing and our lives may just end with unforgiveness which is toxic draining our energy attacking our own mind and body creating even physical illnesses whereas forgiveness can revitalize us by connecting us to our inner resources so what would be predominant in our own final will and testament if you take the family beliefs my uh, uh, mother and, and my entire family they remained angry with my father and it was justified because of his terrible actions and my mother died with feelings of being betrayed in love and this became my inheritance i also held it for some time and i repeated the pattern in my life with a bad marriage and i have been fortunate to break out of that pattern through all the forgiveness work that i did with my father in mind so forgiveness has rewritten my will and testament changing not only the legacy i am leaving behind but also my family legacy because it's now ending with me if so if something has been running in the family and we don't want to hand it down to our descendants we can break the cycle now with forgiveness through our forgiveness that aspect of conflict will no longer exist it cannot be passed on to the next generation into the world we we end the cycle with ourselves we heal the past we heal ourselves and that's the gift that we will to the world around us okay so this will represents the our will the, the will that we are making the emotional will it will represent the overall attitude and the will with which we have lived our life and the testament reflects our actions our thoughts our behaviors it's a testimony to our characteristics the testament is what we have shown to ourselves and to others over the years of living our lives it might have changed in various uh, stages of our life and are we changing or does our testament remain the same and even you know have mold on it even good property if it's not maintained will become dilapidated so same with our attitudes thoughts behaviors are we just holding on to what we have what we've been given rather than becoming who we are that becoming we can do through releasing and forgiving if we keep in mind that every action that we take is reflected in our emotional will we might live our lives differently this mental emotional spiritual wealth we generate that can't be contained inside of us it's our legacy that spreads to everyone in our lives even while we are alive unlike the material wealth we accumulate it this goes to the descendants of our entire world and, the, and this legacy does not require a written legal document our life is the legal document how we live our life is the writing on that document and this will does not have to be probated we can't control to whom we leave this legacy 
our legacy of emotions, thoughts, and attitude because our legacy is already being dispersed even while we are alive. And the will cannot be refuted or revoked because whether anyone wants it or not, whatever we are accumulating is perpetually being passed on during our life and even beyond our lives. And it doesn't matter whether we have children or not, because this legacy is not limited to our family lineage. Our thoughts and actions of each moment are already out in the world. The energy we put out is being picked up by everyone in our lives and it's passed on through them, utilized in different ways by different people now and even after we are gone. Let's pause here and contemplate on our life up until now. We're going to do a little exercise. Let's transport ourselves to the future when we are at the end of our lives. Okay, so close your eyes and again reflect on these questions. Please close your eyes. If I were living the last 12 hours of my life, what would I be thinking about? What are my thoughts? What are my actions? Am I satisfied with the will, the testament, the legacy I am leaving behind? Is there some regret in my life? When I am living my last 12 minutes, how do I feel about how I have lived my life? How would I want to feel? Reflecting back on my life at that point, what would I change if I had the choice to change it on my timeline now? <clears throat> when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back and just notice what came up. So we all make mistakes. We've all been hasty in the decisions, been selfish, felt injured, retaliated, you know, different things. We may, may, we may have distanced ourselves from people, made new relationships, uh, ignored some. You know, looking back, if there was a possibility of resolving the conflicts in each relationship, would that be a choice you would make? Not to re reconcile, but to resolve the conflict that exists. Would you make the effort to forgive? Or would you rather avoid it for now, retain the strife, and carry all this baggage of unresolved issues into your next journey, your next life? If you're shifting residence from one country to, to another, we would uh, dispose of everything and, you know, vacate properly. We would sell everything, carry only what we want with us. We won't leave, leave things pending, right? Similarly, reflecting at the end of our lives, would we choose to close up? wind up, end conflicts, be at peace before leaving or do we want to have it all pending and leave in a state of uh, restlessness, agitation, carrying all those encumbrances from our past? If your answer is that you want peace, say it aloud to yourself. Yes, I want to create peace. Say it now. Yeah. This path of forgiveness frees us of all those attachments, bonds, conflicts, unresolved issues. So that what gets dispersed through our will is harmony and goodwill. And there's no other time than now to begin the work of forgiveness. If you're already on that journey, now is the time to do more, to become aware of every single discomfort inside us and work it through. And if we do this now, in the last few hours or last few minutes of our life, before we die, we would have the gift of sweet remembrances, memories of our life, memories of even the conflicts as events in our life that helped us to grow and learn. Memories without that emotional charge of hatred. You know, just sweet remembrances. 
And then we can live in contentment and peace, willing to move on with love and peace in our heart. And we'll bestow this upon our family, our world, and even on to our own future lives. That's what we'll be creating for our future lives. So if the time is now to begin this journey towards our inevitable death, to play an active role towards a peaceful death and to leave behind a legacy of goodwill, what would you do? Now close your eyes again. I'm asking you to close your eyes many times. Close your eyes again and think. Close your eyes. Who would you like to forgive first? And who would come next? Each time you have a stumbling block, just notice your own discomfort. Notice if there's any fight within you when you think of some people. Is there a part that's resisting to forgive some of them? Open to forgiving some, resisting to forgive some, a discomfort about forgiving some. Just become aware of all that. It's normal. Just become aware of it. We don't become bad if we are unwilling to forgive. It's just that there's some resistance there. Make a note of it. And then when you're ready, you can come back. So if we have parts fighting within us, we can't think with clarity. Within fighting, we are doomed to fall, like a fire, country that's fighting within itself. A country with solidarity will win. And forgiveness creates that solidarity within us. And in that solidarity, in that unity within us comes courage, strength, peace. And that leads to more willingness to forgive. And this becomes a cycle. And the gift of forgiveness will just keep flowing. And the more we forgive, the more we receive. So we acquire multiplied benefits and blessings from all others through our forgiveness. And then we leave behind these benefits and blessings for our family, our friends, our society, our earth. The writing on our will and testament then would have what? It will have words of peace, love, forgiveness, and be bequeathed to the descendants of the future, all that we've learned and the effects of all that we have practiced. We might think, you know, whatever we do, it's only one drop in the ocean. And so why bother to do anything? And this kind of apathy is what has brought the world to where it is today. There was a girl and her father, they were driving and accidentally they bumped lightly into a bike. The guy on the bike got so furious, he followed them all the way to wherever they went, banged on that car, shattered the glass at the back and then zoomed off. So there's so much of fury stored in people today. And if you just stay passive, it's actually criminal. Instead of helplessly escaping from action, we want to start with action. We can start with just one person. That is ourselves. We can take charge of ourselves. As we transform, our change will allow a few others around us to transform. And as we change, we create change in our small circle. In our, like if I, if I take my workshop in a small work group of 30 people who attend a workshop, they experience transformation from ill will to goodwill. And they use the methods and they bring ch change, so much more change in themselves and their families start changing. So with 30 people who are here, 30 families change and friends of those 30 families change and the change continues to spread. There was a man called Ilongo. He was very angry with his father. He felt his father had overlooked him and uh, had been partial to his sister about property. So in the workshop, he did a lot of release work with the father expressing all his anger and a couple of weeks later he called me up to say what am i doing i'm abusing i've been abusing my father for so many years he's 70 years old is this the life that he deserves how could i treat him like this so i asked him what do you want to do now he said no no i've already stopped treating him that way i'm giving him a lot of love and affection it is terrible that he had to put up with all this abuse from me so this man's perspective on how he viewed his father changed and once he had expressed all that anger and forgiven his father, he just, I mean, it was just, he just stepped into forgiveness. And what he actually felt for, the, for his father deep inside was then free to emerge. And that was the love and compassion that he felt. 
that property and all that didn't matter anymore. It was the father and son relationship. It changed the whole thing. And then when the father died a few years ago, his father's final years were a testament of the peace he felt. And that became the memory he left behind for his children and grandchildren. And the son having forgiven the father and himself was at peace with himself. His legacy then is one of forgiveness and peace. And through his act of forgiveness, he was rewriting his testament. So Mahatma Gandhi said, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. So using punishment is uh, re retributive justice. You know, a lot of times we think ju justice needs punishment. So pa there are two kinds of justice, retributive and restorative. So punishment is retributive and it doesn't support the person or society. It hardens the offender and creates a more criminal outlook. The, per the person feels they're inherently bad and they can't change. Like they're not, almost like not part of humanity. We were involved in an experimental project in a city sub jail and first time offenders of petty theft were segregated and treated like uh, students. And they were given daily personal growth sessions. Over a six month period out of 900 offenders who went out on bail, only 25 were arrested again for crimes. Under normal circumstances, before this project started, 90% uh, of them used to return as criminals. See the difference just with how they were uh, given an opportunity to change. Uh, there's a tribe in South Africa which is very beautiful. When a person acts irresponsibly or unjustly, he's placed in the center of the village. He's alone, unfettered, and all the work in this uh, uh, village will cease every man, woman and child joins the circle and each person will speak to the accused. And what will they speak? They'll recall all the good things that the person in the center has done in his lifetime. Only the good things. And each person will say it. And this ceremony could last for days. And at the end of it, once everybody is done, the circle is broken and the person is welcomed back into the tribe. Isn't it beautiful? Their belief is that the person has forgotten their intrinsic worth and this reminder of who he is will bring him back to his equilibrium. That is restorative justice. It is so beautiful. When, when we are connected to our core or our source, we can't cause harm. It's only when we lose touch with who we are, that essential who we are, that's when we misbehave. So no person is unforgivable. Forgiveness is for the worst so-called sinner. It's not dependent on their repentance or the extent of offense. The key lies in the heart of the forgiver. When our emotions are processed, we automatically reconnect to our essence of unconditional love. And then we feel compassion for the offender for their loss of inner connection. And when we forgive, we stop punishing ourselves. You know, there's some harm inflicted on us. We keep reaping the effects of that. And when we forgive, we can stop that. Like there was an adult victim of child rape who didn't realize the impact the incident had on her until she began to experience uh, intimacy issues and trust issues. Then when she brought out all those emotions hidden under the carpet and dealt with them, then she began to feel lighter, freer and more trusting. So she could then get back her life and live with, you know, have intimacy, trust, everything in her life. And if she did not forgive, there's no justice for her. So we don't bypass our feelings, we process them and then we forgive. So if forgiveness became a part of our lifestyle, we'll practice it automatically. Resentment is like one virus, it keep on, keeps on spreading, moving not only to people but across time through generations. Say if you take a 10 year old boy who's the recipient of this passed on resentment in school, uh, say a teacher brings this virus of resentment into the classroom and he's bullying this child. So this child receives it. And the teacher probably received this virus from his grandfather 40 years ago. Now this unknown 10 year old child is bullied by this teacher and he brings this anger into his own life. And he, he, bring, he gets married, he, he grows up, he gets married and he flings this anger onto his children, his grandchildren. 
So now his grandchild feels bitter about life. Now already we're looking at this virus uh, being transmitted down six generations in this one example. So on and on that way, ill will spreads. That is what we're, you know, handing down. Forgiveness could stop this generational transmission of ill will and protect us from all the suffering. <clears throat> we can become the person to break the cycle of woundedness. We become the testimony of, of change for the better. And we can reduce the perpetration of violence in our society. Just as ill will spreads easily, we can facilitate the spread of goodwill also in small ripples. Over time, we'll be the creators of large waves of transformation. Every time we heal one aspect, we reduce it in that whole collective consciousness, in that morphogenetic field. We can create planetary transformation just by working on ourselves because we are each a part of the planet. Forgiveness creates a legacy of love. And people in power, you know, people like politicians, spiritual leaders, religious leaders, heads of institutions, even activists who mo mobilize a lot of human resources, they have a large scope. If they advocated forgiveness, imagine the impact on humanity and on this planet. If businesses and corporate houses were to function from a state of forgiveness, how much peace there would be in the world instead of fights, hatred, revenge. And then society and governments would have a huge revenue in the form of what? Goodwill, cooperation, well-being, ongoing growth, right? And then the question is, will all this last? It's a lifelong journey. We keep releasing whatever arises to the surface layer by layer. We keep lightening the load we carry. And then we begin to respond differently to the challenges that we will continue to face. If my, I said, I'll talk about my father's story. So when my father left us, I was, I was around two years old. I didn't even know what I felt towards him. And I didn't know I had any anger. In my adulthood, with the urge by a group of friends, I did a release exercise with him. It took me 45 minutes of punching and verbalizing to even know I had anger. You know, it was after 45 minutes, anger actually came gushing up. And then once it surfaced, it took just a couple of minutes for it to be expressed fully. And then it was gone. It was done with. With all the baggage out of the way, I could feel understanding and compassion for him. And then I thought it was done. But this was the first layer. Then over the years, each time something surfaced, I used the opportunity to process and deal with the next layer and the next layer. And I began to feel more compassion, safety, trust, understanding. And I felt my own power. And I got to know much later that during that same period, my father began to regret the way he had lived his life. He repented for all the hurt he had caused my mother and he kept thinking of us often. So as I, and he also became more spiritual and he, his anger went down and he had a whole lot of change. As I did the work, he transformed radically somewhere. And it's no coincidence, it's happening all the time. Forgiveness restores us and our relationships. As my father changed from being angry, arrogant and bitter, to being accepting of his mistakes and more peaceful, his legacy to the world also changed. And so has mine as I work through all those layers and layers of stuff with him. We have a, a program, online program. It's a 41 day release to forgive. It's a uh, recorded program. And I participated in this entire program two times myself. And it gave, so 41, 41 twice. And it gave me exponential release, huge insights, and so many shifts in my perspective. Each day, a new layer would come up and get released. I was so much lighter at the end of it. So was every other participant. Huh? In, in my approach, I, there is a natural forgiveness process that happens in life. So in my approach, I use the same uh, pr uh, you know, natural process with specific uh, tools each step along the way. So this makes it quick, deep, and lasting without the fear of us breaking it midway. And we don't have to wait for one mood to make it happen. The workshops leads us through the steps. And uh, we do have this uh, forgiveness path to freedom workshop coming up soon. We have all these programs available. 
and uh, we have this uh, workshop the big three day workshop coming up uh, soon uh, in august in chennai and uh, i think the details are going to be shared on the slide and if you are interested you can uh, you please feel free to contact us the number is also on the slide and uh, i'm i'm writing a book on forgiveness describing and outlining all these steps and uh, today i'll lead you through a couple of exercises to begin the journey 